Welcome to The Punter, your best guide to this weekend's Premier League fixtures. I'm Flash Gordon Watson and today I'm joined by Chrissy Graham, top stats man in the business. Chrissy, you had a good week? Yeah, it's been good. Looking forward to the weekend as well. Uh, obviously the Manchester Derby and two big London clubs under a lot of pressure, Chelsea and Arsenal. OK, well let's start at the Emirates. We're going to have a look at Arsenal versus West Brom and Arsenal coming on the back of getting beat 2-0 at home to Swansea. Yeah, what happens if we lose this one? Well, the fans like trash the Emirates Stadium. I mean, it's getting that bad, isn't it? After the fury of last weekend, uh, two key things for me about West Brom: their away form hasn't been quite as impressive this this season. They've lost two in a row, and the stats are pretty awful as well. Just a one away clean sheet in the last 24 games, and they've never kept a clean sheet against Arsenal in the Premier League. So, for all those reasons, I think a narrow win for Arsenal tomorrow. A narrow one, though. OK, well, obviously, there's always three parts to the, or three people to this show, and the other one's the bet. Butler on the other side. Butler, we like Arsenal. Yeah, I think you would do. I mean, if you asked me to price this game up two or three weeks ago, it'd be around about two to five Arsenal. Now, Arsenal aren't playing well, but this is a West Brom side, as Chris has said, coming on the back of two defence again, two, two defeats. So, if the question is now, Arsenal are getting too big, and I think they're becoming serious betting propositions. The four to seven here, available with the bookies, is going to get bigger and bigger because the money is coming for West Brom in the Asian handicaps on the handicaps. The draw here, 16 to five, I think that's the best West Brom can hope for. But personally, I think Arsenal are getting too big. Four to seven might not be a price that you would out there with term and saves value, but I think this is, is a little bit of value here. And I think half-time, full-time, Arsenal half-time, Arsenal full-time could be the way to go. I think there might be tight. West Brom are very defensive. 3-0 last season this fixture. And I think Arsenal, 4-7, to seven, is getting towards a very decent bet. OK, Arsenal, 3-0 last year. Do you feel as if it could be uh, over 2.5? Um, no, I mean I, I kind of get that excited about the four to seven that, that Nigel's espousing about. I just, I just think there's loads of question marks about Arsenal at the moment, and I think it could be a very tense affair tomorrow, like the QPR game back in October. And I think it could be, I think one 0 for me a goal in the second half will be a lot of nervous fans come half time. I think on Saturday. Butler, is it a toss of the coin, unders and overs? Well, the bookies were making about a strong favourite uh, over two and a half goals here, which is surprising to me. Eight to 13. Four of the last six games for Arsenal have been under two and a half goals. So usually with Arsenal, you expect this free-flowing football. It's not happening. The personnel isn't there. Under two and a half goals, 11 to 10, perhaps could be a listen back. I don't think West Brom will score. Personally, I think if you look at the match odds, four to seven, you compare that to the QPR game, they were two to five to beat QPR. I don't think there's much really. I know QPR obviously at the bottom of the table, but I don't think four to seven. I think four to seven is the best way to play. Personally, I think I think Arsenal will win. I agree with Chris, it could be a bit nervy, but I think Arsenal will win to nil. So back Arsenal to win to nil. On the under two and a half goals in the market though, maybe a small bit of value on under at 11 to 10, because Arsenal aren't that free-flowing football side you have seen in the past. But I really think these prices are about, about, about right with the bookies. OK, well we're looking at that, thinking that Arsenal probably 1-0, maybe 2-0. We need a goal scorer, Chrissy G. Um, that's not a very exciting one, but I think I think Giroud definitely. I think, you know, the dodgy wee couple of months started his Arsenal career, but he's turned it round. Like Henri, like Bergkamp, they started their Arsenal campaigns quite late. And, and I think he's finding his feet now. I think he's becoming a real force, uh, an aerial force, certainly. And I think he can score first tomorrow. Butler, two people over here. Fancy Giroud. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll wall you out there. I mean, Walcott and Podolski are doubts for this game. Giroud heads the best at 9-2. You're not going to get very rich with the prices there on offer. Probably best to back him to score at any time at around about 11-10. to Jovino, 13-2. to But the man who's scoring most of the goals for Arsenal this season, which creativity, is Cazola, 8-1. to If you fancy West Brom to score, Shane Long is the favourite at 11-1. But it's all about Giroud from this end as well, I think 9-2. to And your old mate for Marlon Flash, he's surely going to get one right this one, one time, around about 25-1, to isn't he? Yeah, don't rule him out for Marlon. Left back, he might score from open. And play as well. Much value at 25 to 1, but Olivia Giroud for me. Now, first of the three o'clock kickoffs is Sunderland versus Chelsea at the Stadium Malai, and I can't split these two sides. Well, I mean, I'm always every week trying to find a reason to back Sunderland, and you know, I'll try and construct a case. And I think they played quite well in the second half on Sunday against Norwich, but they got beat again, and it's getting quite worrying now, isn't it, for, for Martin O'Neill and Sunderland? It really is. But Chelsea, what, what, what on earth is going on there? You know, it's it's really concerning times. This is their worst run since 1995 at the moment. You know, no wins in seven. But I just, I just think, I, I just think Chelsea are low in confidence. But Sunderland are even lower in confidence. So for that reason, a narrow Chelsea win reluctantly. Butler, reluctant Chelsea low-scoring win. 
Yeah, well, Chelsea have a fantastic record in this fixture. And, you know, if you look at any team they want to play, it's going to Sunderland. You think it's a tough trip, but Chelsea have won the last seven here. They always score goals when they go here. It's a different Chelsea. The thing is, for me, how, how much confidence can they take from that North Shore win? 6-1. Torres finally getting on the score sheet. Can he go up there and do the business? I'm not so sure if he can. 5-6 to six Chelsea. Again, this is a price that you would never see some two or three weeks ago. You would expect that to re around about 8-11. to 11. So it's up to you whether you think they're valuable. And I personally think they will win the game because I think Sunderland's on a, on a terrible run. Martin O'Neill's under huge, huge pressure. And Sunderland, that big price can be sucked into the relegation issue. Don't worry about that. The draw, 11-4. to four. I think that could be the best hope for Sunderland this game. And I'm sure that many people have a few quid in the draw. But Chelsea could get bigger. And if they hit even money, I certainly want to be involved. Their record here is phenomenal. And I want to see a little bit of a, a, a shake-up, some confidence back on the back of the win at the North in the midweek. Can that win turn their season around? Uh, five to six backers will be hoping it can. Cheers, the butler. We're off to Swansea versus Norwich at the Liberty Stadium next, Chrissy G. And Swansea going great guns. Oh, both are. You imagine the back slapping going on in this game between the sides. You're brilliant. No, you're brilliant. No, you're brilliant. Both sides playing outstanding. And, you know, it makes a lot of sense to back Swansea here. They must be buoyant after that win against Arsenal. Their home form has been superb this season. But what right have I got to oppose Norwich, who've done absolutely amazing? If they avoid defeat here, it'll be their best run since 1989, the same month that the Berlin Wall came down. I just didn't have any right to go against Norwich here, so I think a draw. Splinters for Chrissy G, Butler. Yeah, I'll be sitting straight on the same fence as Chrissy G in this one. I think the draw represents good value. 13 to 5, both teams in form. Both teams were fancied by many to go down. And they've turned their fortunes around. They've given them some real chance of printing the top half, let alone the bottom half. Norwich have drawn three of their last six games. Swansea have drawn three of their last six games. Norwich won this fixture 3 2, like I said before. Every time these two play, there's goals. I expect lots of goals on the same. I think this could be a very entertaining draw. And at 13 to 5, the draw gets my vote here. I think a 2 2 draw could be a decent call in this game. There's always goals when these two sides meet. Norwich have been involved in two 1-1s in the last four games. Not Swansea have been involved in two 1-1s as well in their last six games. So 1-1 could, again, be a, prob a possibility. But it's all about the draw for me. 13-5, two informed teams, and I think they'll keep their unbeaten run, keep going for another week. Cheers, Butler. Off to St Mary's now. Southampton versus Reading. And Chris... I just see this as an end-to-end -end basketball match and there's no fear factor for either side. What price is sex at all here? I was looking cool. at a 4-3 or 4-2 yeah, to Southampton. This could be amazing. Two sides are scoring a lot more than the league positions indicate, yeah. conceding as many as the league positions indicate. Um, just great TV, I think, that this match it, it really will, will be terrific. Um, but pluses and negatives of uh, pluses and negatives of both sides, but I think I think probably the draw here, you know, five all draw. <laughs> Butler, plenty of entertainment. Saints win. Well, when I looked at this match, I actually priced Saints up at four to five. I thought, and I saw the even money. I thought Southampton were a decent bet. When I delved into the stats and looked at the history, Reading have a fantastic record on this feature. I think they've unbeaten, so they've only lost one in the last seven times they visit the South Coast, including a three-one win there last season. So, if you're a stats man, the sixteen to five might tempt you. But if you draw five to two, I great Chris's point. Both teams will go for it. But I think at this early stage, this is a must-win for either side because they're going to be in real serious trouble if they don't get three points. And for that reason, I think the home form of Southampton. May be too strong for the weaky defence of Reading. I agree with you. Goals will be on the count on the cards, but I expect more goals from the red half than the blue half. I think Southampton will win this game in an absolute thriller. I think three two or four two is a lively contender, but nil nil at around about fourteen to one, not a chance on that happening. Even money Southampton slightly get my vote because the stats say Reading, but I say form and current form and home form say Southampton, and I'm going with the Reds. All the goals at St Mary's. We're off to Villa Park now. Aston Villa versus Stoke. And this has got nil-nil wrote all over it. It does. The, the stats indicate that. Five of the last seven games were draws. Just eight goals scored in the last six matches between these sides. The stats scream draw. But I, you know, I just think, you know, I, I'm looking to take Villa on every week. I must admit that. How will their young, little, fragile team... Uh, come up, how will they cope against the brute, ugly, horrible force of the mustachioed Stoke team? How will they cope with that? That's the question for me. And I think if Stoke, this, this game's almost set up beautifully for them. You know, they can bully the, the young lads from Aston Villa. And for that reason, although the stats and probably even the value um, suggest the draw, I think Stoke might win. OK, from the fragile Chrissy G to the big brute Butler. 
Well, I tell you what, I think this is a very, very intriguing game. I think it's one of my best bets of the weekend. I under two and a half goals in this match. Whatever price it is, it's a certainty. There's not many goals. Aston Villa have only scored eight at home. Stoke have only scored seven away. They'll cancel each other out. It'll be a very physical thing. I take Chris's point on absolutely right. Aston Villa, young side. Don't know what they don't know what they let themselves in for when big old Stoke come into town. But the best way for me to play is if I was an exchange player playing on the betting big exchange, I'll be a massive layer of Aston Villa. Get the draw and get Stoke going for you. If you're a bookmaker, you'll be happy to lay Villa this week. I tell you what, I think Stoke at 21 to 10 will have their backers because they won 1 0 at West Brom last week, which is a much tougher place to go, a similar type of place to go. But the draw here, 9 to 4, slight little bit of value on the draw personally for me, and 0 0 at around about 8 or 9 to 1 is an absolute great bet. But as well as a bookie, I'd lay Villa to the cows. Come on. Cheers, Butler. Well, last three o'clock kickoff we're going to cover is at the DW Stadium, and it's Wigan versus Queen's Park Rangers. And again, both sides. Can you split these two? I, I can't, to be honest. I think they're both really struggling. Wigan, four defeats in five QPR, no win in the first 15 fixtures. If you don't win again here, it's the worst ever start to a Premier League campaign, which is worrying. And the worst generally since Sheffield United back in 1990. I think QPR really disappointed me last week. I thought they'd beat Aston Villa. And you could, if, when you watched the Redknapp interview after the game, he was gutted. He was yeah. gutted. They had and chances, though. They, 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 they had chances. I think he realises now the enormity of this task to keep this side in the Premier League. And I think they'll, I think they'll fall short again here. I think, I think a draw against two very much um, off-form sides. We've got the draw again, Butler. What price? Well, I'm, I'm agreeing with you again. I'm sorry, I don't like to keep doing this, but I think the draw is fantastic value here. Harry Redknapp in charge of QPR for two games, two draws. Wigan draw a lot of games. I'm, like Chris has said, they're not winning games, but they're drawing them. The draw at 21 to 10 here is very short as far as bookmakers. Usually around about 5 to 2 or 9 to 4. They are going short. When they go 2 to 1 or 21 to 10, the bookies take note. And you either back them. I think they very rarely get it wrong. The draw 21 to 10. Would you back QPR 9 to 4 away from home about a team that haven't won so far this season? Not for me at all. We Wigan at 29 to 20 haven't scored in the last two games. With doubts over both sides, the best thing to do is opt for the draw at 21 to 10. Cheers, Butler. We're going to have a quick break, but when we come back, it's the big one: Manchester derby, Man City versus Manchester United. We'll see you in two. Welcome back to the punter. I'm Flash Gordon Watson and I'm with top stats man in the business, Chrissy Graham. And we're going to have a massive look now at Manchester City versus Manchester United at the Etihad. 1.30 kickoff on Sunday. And is this a game that Man City can't afford to get, to get beat? Well, I think it's still, it's still fairly early in the season. And, so know, even if they get beat, they're not out of the title race? Not at all. Not at all. Be six points behind? Yeah, but you know, United are always capable of dropping silly points as we saw already this season on more than one occasion. I just think... I think both managers will take a draw here, and I think it will be a draw. I think it will be a, a tight, tense affair. You've got to give respect to Manchester City's amazing home form. They've not lost at home for two years now in the league, and for that reason, I just think, oh, you know, I just think that they won't, they won't lose on Sunday. I know United are probably capable of, of beating that. We remember against Arsenal, they, they ended their long unbeaten run back in 2004. I just get the feeling this might not be a great game as we, as we were expecting, and I think it will be, you know. Play a 1 1 draw. Butler, where does the value lie in this Manchester derby? Well, it's very hard to find value in these kind of games because obviously the odds compilers are asking to price up the top two teams in the country. How wrong can you be? It's like Nadal against Federer. It's like the top two rugby teams playing against each other. How wrong can you be? And I think the bookies have got it about right. 13 to 10 Manchester City are to win this game. I think Chris's point, they've got a fantastic home record. They're very, very strong. And the thing is, how, how much the loss of the Champions League and being out of Europe totally means they can concentrate on the one thing they need to do and win the Premier League title. The draw is a 12 to 5 bet. Manchester United, 11 to 5. My always philosophy is when you can't split the two teams, you think the price is about right, you opt for the draw. But personally, I think this means so much to Man City. They have to come out and pro shoot, come up on their European nightmare, their headache, come back and see if they can win the game. So I think my emotional, see a little bit of money would be on Man City, but sensible tactic wise, I think the draw. If I was a bookmaker, I'd be a layer of Man United. They can't keep giving away so many cheap goals, especially if you go to the Etihad. So I'm opting for Man City slightly at 13 to 10. OK, layer of Man City myself, uh, fresh Man United players. Man City, tough week this week in Borussia Dortmund. How many goals? 
I don't think we'll see many. I, I really don't, despite the attacking flair and verve uh, pre present of the Etihad on Sunday. Uh, I just think it will, like I say, quite a, quite a ten, tight, tense affair. None of these sides will want to lose this game seriously. And, you know, for me, it would have to be unders. And I think seven of the last ten matches between these sides at the Etihad or Main Road before that went under two and a half. So I'm sticking with that. OK, Butler. Chrissy Graham, he fancies under. Yeah, if you look at the stats of the league form here, especially at the Man City Stadium or the Etihad or Main Road, six of the last seven have been under one and a half goals. So there's not been many goals at all in any of these games they play. Over two and a half goals is surprisingly the favour at eight to 13. Over one and a half is one to four. Under one and a half is seven to two in this game. I think if you look at last season, though, there was a freak result. There was 18 goals involved in the four games they played. Obviously, they played in cup competitions as well. But if you took two of them out of the equation, the league form, they were very, very tight. I think they'll be very tight game. I, I, I can't see it being nil-nil. I can't see it being one-nil, one-one. I, I just think it could be... Uh I, th I personally believe that over two and a half goals is no value, 8-13. to 13. The value is on the unders. I couldn't be back in the overs. But with all that talent and Ray on the pitch, surely we, we've got to see some goals. We have got to see some goals, and I'm fancying Wayne Rooney to do it again. Ooh, we're, we're, we're feeling the same vibe here, definitely. Yeah, yeah. First goal scorer, Wayne Rooney? Yes, absolutely. Uh, he's a big game player. Uh, he's key, and he's, you know, he's, he's such a key part of this Man United team. And we saw on Saturday after the Reading game, he was embarrassed after that match, you know, but the mistakes and conceding three goals against Red and, and you know, he, uh, he'll take such personal responsibility to make sure Man United play well in this game. I think he'll score first. Butler, we both like Rooney, but we can't discount company with the goals going in from set pieces against Man United this year. Yeah, he'll be a big price. He'll be about a 25 to 1 shot. Rooney, uh, their game is 7 to 1. The favourite is Van Persie. This is back old school price goal score prices. 6 to 1 the field. Take your pick. Tevez hasn't had a good goal scoring record against Manchester United since he left uh, Old Trafford. He's not, I think he's only scored one goal in any of the fixtures he's played. Aguero's the man for the big occasion for me personally. I think he's Man City's main threat. De Zeko hasn't scored since he started playing in from the start 11. He only scores since he's come off the bench. So it's all about Aguero for, for the Man City side as well. As I'm concerned, on the Man, on Man United side, Van Persie is the favourite six to one. But an informed Rooney at seven will certainly have his backers. That's the Manchester derby sorted out. Now we're off to Goodison for the first of the three o'clock on Sunday. Everton versus Tottenham and Chris Everton on the slide. Tottenham definitely on the up. I think Everton just uh, drawing too many games, aren't they? Let's be honest. Just one win in the last nine. Spurs three wins in a row, and you know through the, the the knockout stages of the Europa League, things are good there, and they're reveling in the misfortune of the North London rivals, Arsenal, of course. So yeah, I, you know, I think Everton are consistently uh, too short a price every week at, at the moment. So I think Spurs, even though they're, they're missing Gareth Bale, of course, I think they're, they're a smashing price this weekend. Butler, we like Tottenham. Lay Everton. I think you're right. I think it's the way to go. Everton are very, very short. All the media will be telling you Everton are flying under David Moyes, but that's not the case. As Chris says, one win in nine. They've drawn an awful lot of James. Four draws in their last six matches. Three draws in this fixture in the last six matches. It's all about the draw for me, 23 to 10. We've put up a lot of draws in this weekend's fixture list, and I think the draw here again represents fantastic value. If I was a bookmaker or an exchange player, Everton at home. I, you don't you want to lay in Everton at home? On this occasion, I think the 11 to 10 is too short. Tottenham, 11 to 4. Gareth Bale has a huge loss for them. I think he's very influential. I think Suarez is the most influential player for a team in the Premier League. I think Bale comes a close second. So it's all about the draw for me. When you can't split two teams, what do you do? You're about the draw. And if you've done it at Everton games this season, four draws from seven of their home games, it's got to be the value at 23 to 10. Yeah, Tottenham and the draw on your side. Looking for goal scorers. Fellaini, Everton. Mm. Jermaine Defoe, Tottenham. Either for you? I'll take the latter. I know it's a pretty boring, uh, predictable selection, but I just think he's, he's, he's absolutely on fire now. He's just brimmed full of confidence. Five goals in his last four games. Displaced Adabayor as the number one striker at, at the club at the moment. And just, you know, and, and probably the best form of his career at the moment, he has to be backed. Butler, we like, we, Jermaine Defoe. Well, he's the favourite of Tottenham for all the first goal for them. He's a 7-1 to one shot. Jelovic is the favourite in the match at 13-2. to two, But the goals seem to have dried up for the Croatian international. Fellaini's the man in form. He's the man who always gets the goals on the big occasion for Everton. He's a 7-1, to one, rated the same price as Jermaine Defoe, which I find a bit strange. And by your 17-2, to two, will he play? I don't very much. I think I think he'll start. Clint Dempsey finally getting some goals. Looking like he was at Fulham last season. Could have potential backers at 19-2. to two, But I agree with you, Defoe at 7-1. to one. But I wouldn't rule out no goal scorer at a big price in this game. Cheers, Butler. Well, then we're looking at unders and overs, and is this going to be a tight game? I've, I've got to go with overs here. Everton tend to score in every single game. 
and Spurs are just, you know, they're just, you caught them open now, they just bleed goals, they're just coming from everywhere. Look at some stats here, over two and a half in Spurs, last seven away games, Spurs have scored two or more in ten in the last twelve games, so Spurs just, just encapsulate what goals are all about at the moment and I've got to go with the overs. Butler, we like the overs. I'm not sure if I do. I quite like the unders here. Under two and a half goals is even money. Over is five to six. I think Everton have been involved in three 1 1 draws in succession. So under two and a half goals in all three of their games. Three of the last six between these two sides have been under two and a half goals. So that really works out and around a bit an even money much chance. The bookies aren't giving much away, but it's a toss of the coin job for me, and I've got to go under two and a half goals. Only small, not a little bit of value, but I've agreed with Chris far too much on his show. I've got to go against him. So I'm going under two and a half five goals at even money. Cheers, Butler. Four o'clock kickoff on Sunday is West Ham versus Liverpool. And for a lot of people, West Ham will be the better the weekend. They will. I, 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 can, I can see why, once again, Liverpool are, are too short a price. West Ham's best start to the, in, the, in the 21st century. Liverpool's worst start since 1964. And the key thing for me is the fact that Luis Suarez doesn't play. How will that affect Liverpool? You know, apart from him, no Liverpool player has scored more than once this season in the Premier League. It all points to West Ham. Butler, no Suarez equals West Ham. I couldn't agree more. I think West Ham's an absolute tremendous value. I couldn't believe the prices when I saw these <laughs> yesterday. 21 to 10, West Ham. Bigger than 2 to 1 for your money. This is a team that will 1 0 down and come back and out bullied and out fought Chelsea in the second half to win 3 1. They won the corresponding fixture last time they met 3 1 2 seasons ago. Liverpool 6 to 4. You know they'll always be backed, but I'm not so sure if they will there because Suarez is not playing and there's also doubts about Steven Gerrard. So if no Suarez, no Gerrard, where are the goals going to come from? Stuart Downing? I don't think so. The draw, nine to four shot here. It's all about West Ham for me. 21 to 10. A crazy price about a team so good at home. And it was just come on the back of a 3-1 winning into the Champions of Europe. Get on the happy hammers. Couldn't agree more, but uh, get on the happy hammers. Are we going to see goals or are they going to get in front, West Ham, and just shut up shop? Well, it's Liverpool, so it's unders. It's Liverpool without, without Suarez, so it's very much unders. I mean, Liverpool couldn't score with Suarez against Swansea or Stoke. How on earth to get the score against West Ham without without the, the great Uruguayan? So for me, it's it's, it's an unders play definitely. I could see you know perhaps perhaps two 0 maybe one one at a squeak, but I I don't see three goals in this game. We don't see three goals in this game, Butler. What price are the unders? Well, under two and a half goals is the favourite at four to six. Not very, very, sh you know, it's a very short price for unders. It's usually a lot, lot bigger than that. Under two and a half, under three and a half is two to seven. And the, and the one and a half is only 11 to five. So the book is agreeing with Chris, not many goals. The stats in this fixture always produce goals. There's been five, last five, sorry, last six games, five of them have been over two and a half goals. Lots of high scoring goals. But the personnel at Liverpool isn't the same. They haven't scored, they haven't only scored one goal in the last two matches. Two one nil wins. They're very defensive minded under Brendan Rodgers don't want to lose and I agree with you under two and a half goals but really would you back them at four to six under two and a half goals there's a price and a price and this is too short I'll be watching the game of interest but I'll just be back in West Ham to win it okay Monday night eight o'clock Fulham versus Newcastle we never oppose Fulham uh, Butler at the cottage can't oppose them this Monday neither well, you say that, Flash. The last two times they played at home, they've been beaten. They're not beaten, beaten hammered. They've been beaten 3 1 by Sunderland, 3 0 by Tottenham. Fulham here won this fixture 5 2 last season. Always goals when these two teams play. I think both teams will score. But 19 to 20, Fulham, I'm not backing them this week. I really, I think there's problems there. Hangeland is back. Brian Ruiz is missing. Huge, huge blow for him. It'll be about minus six as well. I don't fancy Berbatov fancying that right on the riverside there. Minus three degrees. Oh, my God. The draw, 5 to 2, is definitely where I'll be. I think 2 2 or 3 3 again with the old Fulham. Well, Butler, thanks for uh, for everything over there. I do fancy Fulham myself Monday night to play up on your man, on your West Ham winnings. Uh, thank you very much to Chrissy G. Have a good weekend punting. Until next time, we'll see you soon.